It's we we talked about the border wall and sort of the game of political chicken. Mm. This is kind of similar, but it's between governments, not two sides of a government, it's between the U.S. and China. How does this trade fight play out? Well, I think what we're going to find is you'll issue a statement probably today to pave the way for another round of talks. So some things they could come to agreement on pretty quickly, like what's the best way to reduce a trade deficit? It's for America to sell more to China. So opening up China's market a bit more, especially around services, America's biggest, ex biggest exporter in the world, that could reduce the trade deficit. But what they cannot resolve very quickly, and they'll sweep under the rug, are things like improving China's legal system, changing government policy on technology transfers. How do you protect intellectual property with a legal system that doesn't really function as we would expect? No, it is, it is a difficult, it is a uh, sort of labyrinthian legal system exactly. over there. Exactly. Or contract law is, is difficult to enforce. That's a little bit, right now, how important are company deals? In other words, mm -hmm. Forget about governments. Do you think that U.S. and China companies can solve this problem, i.e., maybe making a big order for some Boeing planes, <laughs> yeah. getting Qualcomm, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think the trade position companies, I think, once they're given a bit of an okay, I think they could actually do quite a lot, right? So, but I think the issue on that is going to be whether or not the American side will accept Chinese assurances these deals will go ahead. So what the American side has asked for is we want monitoring. So we don't believe what just because you say you're going to give us more access, make foreign investment easier. We've heard this song before. Why would China so. want that or allow that? So this is interesting on China's part. So before the trade war really heated up, they were about to open their markets more for services because China is balancing towards becoming a services-based economy. They realized state-dominated, especially the financial sector, insurance sector, wasn't really helping them serve a middle-class population. So they were about to let in more competition. So I think on that front, they actually stopped because they wanted to leave it as a bargaining chip on the table. But again, because China's made these assurances before, mm -hmm. there's going to be some skepticism, not just on the Americans' part, but also Europeans, as to whether China can deliver. But imagine, right, two economic powers, how can they really monitor each other? I well, mean, I you, see you that as a Well, you mentioned something, Linda, very important. I'd be disappointed if you didn't, by the way. <laughs> Coming from the UK, where you mm -hmm. live, because there is the third party. There is the EU. Yeah, They're yeah, sort yeah. of over here watching. They have a big stake in how this plays out. How does European influence change this discussion and debate between the U.S. and China? If the cards had been played differently by President Trump, the Europeans, I think, would have joined America in pressuring China. So the perennial complaint by American and European multinational companies is, 15 years after joining the World Trade Organization, why are foreign banks still less than 2% of total banking assets in China? You it's promised to open up, you haven't opened up, right? But if you start a trade war, as in huge terrorists, then, you know, uh, asking multinationals to change the supply chains, the Europeans are not going to play a part in that. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's tacit support, as in they think China should open up more, have more of a level playing field, and improve their legal system and all of that. But it's hard for the Europeans to voice support mm. when you're launching these massive tariffs. They don't come to an agreement by March the 1st. It's going to be 25% tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports into the United States. And say this gets ratcheted up even more, half a trillion dollars worth, and China retaliates. We're not <laughs> talking about a significant I, percentage of world trade. You know what, Europeans Linda? Europeans like that. <laughs> we we got to go. But I'll tell you what, between the Brexit vote and this happening, March is going to be a really interesting month. It certainly will Let's be. Let's take a month off. <laughs> right? See that's, you in a month. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple of months here. Linda, you, real pleasure to have you on set.